Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Crimecast. My name is Ryan, and in this show we will be talking about true crime cases, unsolved mysteries, and cryptid creatures from all over the world, from the mountains of the Himalayas to the suburbs of Los Angeles. Today marks our fifth episode, and the first episode of 2023, I decided to take a little break for the holidays, like I know beforehand, but now we're going to be back into, hopefully, a twice, um, every two weeks do an episode that's what i'm hoping for this year that's my new year's resolution anyways let's get into the topic today which is going to be one of the first colonies in america kind of weird but you'll get it in a minute it's august of 1587 and there's about 150 english settlers would arrive on roanoke island in north carolina a year later the governor of the colony would leave to gather supplies but would return three years later in August of 1590 to find no trace of his colony. So what happened to the colony? Were they were they taken by local Native American tribes? Could they have been killed? Did they leave the island to find resources? All that and more on today's episode, which is Roanoke, the lost colony. And I did take a different approach at the intro today. Um, I really hope to get... um more creative intros instead of just saying the same thing but uh, otherwise with that let's get into some of the history slash background of Roanoke and the time period Okay, so the year is 1587, and England is under the rule of Queen Elizabeth I. Now, at this time, England is a strong and prosperous country, with plays being written by William Shakespeare and raids being led by a man by by Sir Francis Drake against the Spanish. And almost all eyes were on a new frontier, the Americas, because, you know, Christopher Columbus kind of went there by the way i still 100 percent believe that the vikings were the first to discover america but that's gonna be on a different episode hopefully anyways um among these people who became attracted to this promise of like new land in the americas and such was an artist and map maker named john white now as a map maker white had a passion for new land and had already been to north america once before now by the way this is before the um, ill-fated Roanoke trip. So this is before he went to go settle there. So let's fast forward. Let's back up two years prior. So White Ol- would have been had been asked to be an artist for Sir Ralph Lane, who would go to Roanoke or North Carolina in eighteen in fifteen eighty five for an expedition. Excuse me, not eighteen fifty five. Weird. Now, during this expedition, the ship, called the Tiger, ran aground on a rocky North Carolina sandbar, destroying most of their food supplies. But they made up, so they get off, and they don't know where they are at the moment, because, you know, America still new. There's not many settlements around. So instead of these men making friends with the area's well-preserved, prospered, natives meaning the local native american tribes that knew the land and knew how to survive the missions admiral who i believe was like in charge of the ship and stuff would basically go to one of these villages and loot and burn this village and it was in the 
Algonquin, I believe that's how you pronounce it, village. So he just looted this place and burned it for their like and stuff. Now, after this, after the incident, the Admiral would actually leave White Lane and around a hundred other men stationed on near on nearby Roganic Island. With the understanding he would return shortly to resupply them so this mission they're like okay so we're just build up a settlement here while well, this guy left and literally like destroyed a village anyways this would actually be a disastrous move by the admiral now because of what happened right when they got there there were aggravated native americans who would attack the roanoke settlement the colonists were thankfully able to defend themselves, and it wasn't until Francis Drake, who, as we said, was fighting against the Spanish, would show up and offer the group a ride home. Almost all the men, including White, wanted to leave, with only around 15 men staying behind to maintain their claim, so there wasn't going to be any other, like, sailors or pirates, I don't know if there were pirates at the time, wanting to claim this land. Anyways, so White would return to England, but became enthusiastic about the New World. He was so enthusiastic that once he heard about a second voyage to the area, he was asked to join and become the colony's prospective governor. So he was asked to become governor of this new um, colony, Roanoke. White would say yes to this and convince his family, which included his daughter and his and her husband basically has sent along to come along on this trip and also like other men women and children so don't worry it isn't just his wife there you know uh his wife his daughter um nothing is said if he um about his wife so i'm not sure if he did have a wife or anything so don't even go asking anyways yeah Now, let's get to the early days of the Roanoke settlement. Unlike their first expedition to Roanoke, the, this expedition, like I said earlier, included women and children alongside people who wanted to create a settlement instead of just exploring there. So they wanted to actually, you know, build up a town, maybe a city. But it wasn't all perfect because right when they got back there, the colony would start to have problems. Originally, the group was going to settle 100 miles away from Roanoke in a fertile area in the Chesapeake Bay area. But the navigators were forced to stop at Roanoke to check up on the 15 men that were left behind there originally. Oh, by the way, we're in 1587 now. I forgot to mention that. Anyways, now the group, once they arrived at Roanoke, had two options. Either go to the Chesapeake Bay area or stay at Roanoke. Now, the navigator at the time would say, quote, it had been good enough for the last group, end quote. And would tell the group that he had a Spanish ships to plunder. Basically, this guy was like, I don't want to stay here. Get the hell off my ship. The colonists would just mark the ship, eyeing their new home warily, and move in land to track down the old settlement. So basically, the captain of the ship said, get the fuck off my ship. Walk the plank. That's basic. That's not it. Okay. So instead of actually finding these these 15 men with a thriving settlement, they would find bones of the men. The men, the 15 men, had died in a coronated attack by Native American warriors, leaving the settlement with bad blood with the local tribe. So they were already on very, very terrible, you know, connections with the Native Americans. So if they did ask for help, the Native Americans would have been like, no. Now White decided, you know what, I'm going to try to form new relationships, you know, kind of like, be like, hey, those guys weren't the smartest people. I will like be better. But he actually 
His men at the time had conducted a dawn raid on the wrong tribe's encampment, wounding friendly Indians who ended the who in, ended the day who basically like it had more hatred to the Roanoke colonists. So right away they decided, oh, this must be the tribe that like killed the 15 other guys. Let's go raid their camp. Turns out it wasn't. It was friendly. And now if they, I will say this now, if they did not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, if they did not, you know, go to this tribe, you know, kill the wrong tribe, I think they would have survived and actually have a thriving uh, colony. Anyways, even though it was a rocky start, the colony would welcome the first English person to be born in the New World. That's right. Something good did come out of Roanoke. That would be Vin Vin Virginia Dare, who was the granddaughter of John White, who would be born sometime in August of 1587. So there's already one good thing coming out of, you know, all this bad thing and one good thing in America. We had the first, um... In American, but technically not like a white American. Not oh god, I'm sounding fucking racist. Holy shit! Um, like the yeah, the first English person. There we go. Okay. Even though it was a time of excitement for the colony, this is where the downhill of the tragedy would start. Around this time, they were noticing that their food supplies were running low. At the colony's current pace, they were at with food supply and rationing. It was unlikely that they would survive the winter, so this would be their first winter in the colony. Alongside their food supplies running short, only a few supply ships would stop at Roanoke. This is because the group at the beginning of the trip had told people they would be pick, they would pick up the group that was living at Roanoke and make their way to the Chesapeake Bay area. And due to the relationships with the Native Americans right from the start, they were most likely not receive any aid from them. So they only had one option. And that was for White to return to England and announce the colony's relocation and with in return with the much needed supplies. But there was only one problem for White. He, when he returned, he didn't want people back home to think slash say he was a coward for deserting his colony. The other problem was that he didn't want his property slash belongings to be ruined while he was away. But the colonists were actually able to pursue their governor, White, Governor White, and that they would look after his Things. So now it is White's time to return back to his homeland of England. Now, while leaving Roanoke, it would be certain that he would return before the first snowfall. But this is this White was on would be one of the first, one of the last, not the first, well, supply ships to enter slash leave England for three years. So White makes his way to England. By the way, he promised to be back in around three months. So he returns to England, but he wouldn't return for the three years. After his arrival in England, Queen Elizabeth I would receive intelligence that Spain has built an astonishing Armindo, which is like, like a really good um, army. The purpose of this was to invade England, you know, take over England. The queen knew that she would be forced to meet the Spanish in battle on the seas. So she decided to ban all English ships from leaving and from leaving their ports, seeing that all vice vessels might be needed in the future for like wartime needs. But sadly, White couldn't wait that amount of time. After almost a year, he would find two ships. He would pursue the ship's captain to captains to brave the Atlantic Ocean against the captain's judgment. So they're like, hey, we think it's a bad idea. The captains would have been like, hey, we think this is a bad idea. You know, Queen Elizabeth's like, they may need our ships, you know. But the voyage would never reach the island. 
they would be attacked by French pirates, and the pirates would have taken all of the supplies slash food that was meant for the Roanoke colony. So they have to go back to England now, you know, because they kind of got robbed by pirates. <laughs> so John would wait another two years until the war would be over and return to Roanoke in August of 1590. Now, these were the findings that John discovered once he came back. Once Wright arrived in Roanoke, he found absolutely nobody. The settlement was now overgrown and houses stripped and demolished, as if it had been abandoned for years, not even a month or two. Years, it looked like it. Now, while looking for evidence of his family or any, or the rest of the colony, Wright would, dis would find the letters, quote, well, not quote, these are the letters C R O carved into the bark of a tree, as if the world word was not finished and if it had been abandoned. But a couple feet away on a garnish post, the word Crotonin was written on it. Both of these carvings were within the borders of the settlement, so you know it's kind of like what's going on. But Wade had thought to himself, now this quote is from allthatsinteresting.com, quote, at least there was no cross, end quote. Since before leaving, he had told his family to add a Maltese cross to any messages they left. So they did leave the colony or the settlement to put down this specific cross, and I will know it's you. So that's it nobody like there's literally like no more information about what happened J J john didn't know what happened there was no signs they probably were looking for ages and ages but just couldn't find this settlement so now let's get into some of the theories that was a little backstory i don't want to get into the fact that like you know what happened to john is like did he just die of heartbreak like, i don't want to get into that because this is about roanoke and not john white Anyways, so let's get into the theories. Since the, and actually, these some of these theories have been around since the day that the, 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 the disappearance happened, and the world speculated so many different things. One of the main ones was death. Uh, one of the most popular theories is that the colony had died during the winter of 1587, since their odds of surviving was very low due to their supplies running low and white not returning yet as he promised, but in recent years, this theory actually probably isn't true, which is crazy. This is because in recent years, there, have, there has been a lack of human remains slash bodies found on Roanoke Island, as well as the clear evidence that the colony had been carefully dismantled. Uh, another reason for this is actually the carving done by white priests basically saying, you know, they planned this. They planned to leave. Now, next theory would have been relocation. Now, this is a bit of context for this one. The word Croatonin was actually the original name for North Carolina's Hatteras, I believe that's how you pronounce it, islands in the name of the tribes located there. Now, with this information, some people speculated that the colony had relocated to this island. Now, it's actually the theory that White himself had believed, but due to the weather conditions, he was unable to investigate this theory further. Due to this, due to the conditions, White and the ships he brought over, the crew would have to be forced to go back to England. Now, in the years following White, would make repeated pleas to the leaders of England's seafaring community. Now, oh wait, <laughs> White, sorry, the years following White's, it's actually the years following White would try to like plead to leaders to allow him to go back to, to Thronoke. But White would, would never return to the New World. 
others are able to settle in the new world. So that kind of pisses him off like that. He was never allowed to return back, but everyone else was. So I kind of lied. I'm like, nobody really knows what happened, but I was right. He was never allowed to return back. Now, this one is very popular and a bit of a really lengthy one. That theory is that the, the colony had merged with a tribe, with another tribe, but got killed by the poet, Powhatan. I, it's really crazy. So fast forward a couple years, 1607. The, James Count, the Jamestown colony would ask, would ask friendly tribes about the colony to maybe get some information. During a conference between John Smith and Chief Powhatan. It was said that the Roanoke colony had merged with a local tribe. Now, this tribe's name is unknown. And that during an intertribal warfare between the tr this tribe and the Powhatans, and the Powhatans, they had been killed alongside the tribe the colonists have been you know killed along the tribe two years later actually in 1609 once england found out this information it would become the accepted history of the lost colony of roanoke but modern historians aren't actually convinced so basically in um 18th century i think you know 16th century i think i don't know basically it's not medieval it's uh I can't even think what year. 1600s England believed that this was the official reason of what happened to the lost colony of Roanoke. But actually, as we were saying, modern historians really aren't convinced with this. Some believe that John Smith had actually mistook, misunderstood the con his conversation with Poet Oat. It's said that the chief was talking about the original 15 men and not the 117 colony that came later on. So it's believed that actually the, the, the um, colony was actually the original 15 men who came. So here's the question of what actually happened. To this day, nobody exactly knows um, what happened. But... But actually, this is kind of like another main one, is that many col early colonists have reported seeing English men living alongside native tribes, while others say they saw us as met the ancestors of the Roanoke colony. So, theories are still up in the um, You can literally go and visit Roanoke if you feel like it, but I'm very sorry about the sneezing in the background. Everyone has the fucking sneezes in my house whenever I want to record. Anyways, yeah, so it's really unknown what actually happened to these people. Uh, I really sped through this episode. But this was the mystery and story of the lost colony of Roanoke. And you know what? This is like BuzzFeed Unsolved at this point. I'm making BuzzFeed Unsolved content. So what happened to the colony? Those questions are, these questions are still being asked. Like what happened to the colony? Were they killed by Native American tribes? Did they leave the island to find resources? Could they have been kidnapped by the Native American tribes? To this day, historians are still trying to find these answers so i want to say thank you 
for watching this episode and our sixth episode is going to be another special wall ryan you're going a little crazy here with your specials but actually i will be talking about one of the most famous serial killers in england jack the ripper he is an unidentified killer who was based around the white chapel district in london between the years of 1888 and 1891 now why is this special you may ask well i'm going to london in february that is why i'm going for like 10 days so i hope to get the jack the ripper episode out either before or after if it does happen after i will tell you my experiences in london and i'll make that episode like five times longer than it normally is um but yeah i hope everyone enjoyed this episode happy 2023 and i will see you guys for jack the ripper bye don't want to get copyright claimed anyways uh welcome to well editing ryan now the reason i have sunglasses on even though i'm clearly on my bed in my room is because i'm looking at the viewfinder on my camera to show you the difference hi this is ryan it's really hard not to look I, it's really hard to look in the lens compared to behind it which is the viewfinder with that all the way um I look like a motherfucking Karen right now. Anyways, there we go. So I want to bring up some mistakes I had in this episode, which is, of course, Roanoke, the lost colony, I'm going to call it. Yeah. So where did I throw my phone? Okay, so one of the first things is the dates. The dates, of course, are confusing because of how many gaps there are in this story, the dates confusing so I'm putting up my hood because I can't with my hair right now so there we go so the first thing is the times there's two different the first expedition to Roanoke was in 1585 so that would be two years before um, John White who was the governor of Roanoke would take his son-in-law and his pregnant daughter and like the other 150 some odd people to Roanoke to actually settle there. Another thing is who was like the person who led the first expedition that was a man by the name of Sir Ralph Lane. And Sir, now the mission, now and the person who actually started the bad ties with the um, Native Americans during that first expedition would have been the Admiral of that mission who of course not knowing the area well looted and burned in Algonquin village so a tri a local tribe's village got burned down because of the admiral um so way of course returns to england as we all know and then 1587 he's asked to take another trip so he does but they of course wanted to go to a different area which was in the Chesapeake Bay area and of course there were other like colonies around this point but of course they go back to Roanoke and go locate the missing tribe <sighs> which is like but it wasn't White who decided that it would have been the ship's navigator and then so apparently White's men wanted to do another raid on... So White's men actually wanted to do a raid on the tribe that had killed or... Yeah, that had killed the 15 original men who had stayed in Roanoke. But of course they did it on the wrong tribe causing tensions um, between now Roanoke and this tribe. So that's what happened there. And then of course he goes back and a war breaks out. So when he gets back, that yada yada yada. Um he would be now when he returns to 
England. That would be the final supply ship to leave slash enter England for the three year period when England was in a war with Spain. Or the Spanish. I think it was, it was Spain, not the Spanish. So, returning to Roanoke in 1590, they would find the words Cocotonin written on a wood, on a tree. So, yeah. Of course this is still unsolved, but if you go to Roanoke, I believe you can visit there, there's, you know, archaeological digs happening there, and they are finding stuff, and trying to really piece together this mystery. Now, like I said previous, um, when asking the Poetoans, basically um, Pocahontas' tribe, I believe, yes. Wait. He, wait. Okay, so John Smith, when talking to Chief Poeta, who is really, who is um, kind of related to Pocahontas in that sense. <laughs> No shit, Sherlock. Anyways, um, he would tell, you know, White that, yeah, we kind of saw some white people. You know, we, we killed them. They were with, like, this other native tribe. But people believe he mistaken it for the original 15 men and misinterpreted, misinterpreted it as that. Also, I never knew, like, yeah, whatever. And like I said, to this day, nobody really knows what happened to, um, the Roanoke people. So yeah. Now, while I'm editing, I want to say that I think what I want to do something special for the next, um, for the next maybe episode is actually somehow try to stick my voice with a micro with my microphone to this camera and actually do a sit down episode for I believe Jack the Ripper I may do before I go to England because I'm actually going to England so that's either coming out before or after I leave so that's going to be really really exciting so yeah I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys next time goodbye also I hope you like this new format of maybe editing Ryan here so yeah.